Hello guys, and as always, thanks for tuning in. Jay Helmson here. Today we're going to be discussing the Glock 26 Gen 5. Before we do so, I do apologize. It has been just a short bit of time since I've released a video. Uh, all of my videos have been defunded by YouTube. Uh, not completely, but uh, a large amount have been defunded uh, because they're not suitable to all advertisers, uh, mainly because they have these evil guns in them. So uh, I don't plan on changing anytime soon. Um, I'm going to do what I continue to do and keep bringing these to you guys. But just uh, to let you know, uh, it has kind of slowed down my, my initiative to do these uh, just a little bit just because I've got a lot of stuff going on and I get a lot of different things uh, you know, on my plate. So obviously I try to prioritize uh, what is going to be the best bang for the buck. And as of right now, these videos really aren't it. Uh, but I will keep cranking these out as they come because I am backlogged a little bit on these videos. So uh, enough about that. Let's get the show on the road here. Let's talk about the Glock 26 Gen 5. And you guys will notice uh, it is something that I do carry on me. I didn't really intend to. Didn't really plan on carrying this as like a daily carry. Uh, but obviously today this was not planned. This was my daily carry today. Um, We'll get into that here in just a few moments. Uh, before we start this, I will tell you guys one of my favorite Glocks that I remember having was a Gen 3 uh, Glock 26. And uh, I kind of got the gun when I was, you know, into concealed carry more on the civilian side. Uh, really, you know, just wanted a small gun, a compact gun to carry in. There weren't a whole lot of options out there for 9mm. So when I got the uh, Glock 26, the Gen 3 that I had, uh, I really liked the gun because it kind of fit into a lot of different categories. It was one that I could carry easily uh, without really worrying about printing because as you guys know, when you first start carrying, you're worried about printing and you're worried about, you know, possibly uh, jostling it out of, the, out of the holster and, you know, accidental discharges and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it was small enough to carry without you know much issue or much worry on my part, uh, but also large enough that even though I wasn't all that good yet at shooting, uh, I could put down some pretty good groups with it. I felt pretty confident with the gun. Uh, that does definitely play out still in this model here, this uh, Glock uh, 26 Gen 5. And um, just a really interesting gun. If you haven't shot one, this is one of those guns I'd kind of put on, on the short list, you know, guns that you should definitely test out and shoot. Um, just kind of fills a lot of different roles, and it's one of those guns that a lot of people carry, but it's not you know as sexy as like the Glock 19. Everybody likes to say they carry a Glock 19 all the time. Uh, that's definitely not the case. Just in speaking with people, a lot of people are carrying guns this size and even smaller uh, for daily carry. So a little bit about philosophy first. As you guys know, I'm a law enforcement officer. Uh, I carry full time, so I always have a weapon on me, and uh, I you know generally I try to you know, it's a trade-off between what's going to be comfortable to carry and what's going to be something I want to get in a gunfight with. Now, I know that might seem a little bit fatalistic or whatever to some people, but obviously my time in the military has shown me that if you can prepare beforehand, you should definitely do it, right? Uh, so I like to, you know, only carry guns that I plan on getting into a gunfight with. I never plan on getting into a gunfight, but if the reason arises or the situation arises, I want to have a gun on me that I feel confident with in a gunfight. Uh, for me, that's over 10 rounds of, of ammunition, a 9mm at the minimum, and uh, you know something that's more of a full-size gun like this for a couple reasons. Uh, the one reason is because uh, it is easier to draw these larger guns like this, and I say larger, you know, some of you might be snickering because it's a Glock 26, uh, but compared to some of those smaller pocket-sized guns, this is about as small as I would comfortably go. Uh, again, Again, you can get a full grip on this. You can kind of, you know, pull it out uh, without much issue. Uh, we'll talk more about the base plates here in a minute and as far as why I actually went with the extended base pads. Um, you got decent capacity. You got at least 10 rounds, even if you use the truncated one, uh, the truncated uh, model that comes with it. Uh, and then obviously it takes larger magazines, so it'll take magazines from the Glock uh, 19, the Glock 17, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use and put in there, uh, you can use as a backup. So you have plenty of capacity options there. Uh, the trigger system, everything like that, is what you're going to get in the full-size gun, so it's got a really good trigger for its size. Uh, and it just seems to point and shoot very well. So um, that's just kind of my over, overview of the gun. Um, let's go ahead and dive into it top to bottom and I'll kind of ramble on as we go with these other findings and philosophy and whatnot of carrying this gun, why it's on me, uh, and why I find it so handy to carry, okay? So, uh, this gun is actually a night sight model. Uh, it came with just a plastic sight, so I did throw some night sights on there, and that's pretty much how I carry it. Now, the rear is blacked out just a little bit. It's, it's not completely blacked out, as you guys can see. It's got the little rings around there. Uh, the front is just your standard Glock, um, you know, night sight, so GNS. 
uh, but it does have a little white dot there. And I find this pretty easy to pick up, especially with a low profile. But more importantly, and as ridiculous as this sounds, some of the larger sights with the sharper edges, uh, this carries so close to me that uh, you know some of my skin would get it rubbed up against it and would kind of be irritating. I'd get some marks on me in some uh, uncomfortable uh, situations sometimes. So this nice low profile, uh, you know, the, the edges being canted in and whatnot on these standard Glock sights seem to be the best bet for me to carry these. Now this is just like your old, um, you know, your old revolvers, your old uh, detective specials and whatnot. It's made to be carried quite a bit and shot probably very little. It's not like a competition gun. It's not something you're going to go out to the range and really drive tax with it, although I have a funny story about that here in just a few moments. Uh, but it is something that you're going to be carrying quite a bit. So I like to kind of take that into consideration, especially with the sights up there. So these are night sights that I've had put on there. Everything else is pretty much going to be standard Gen 5 material. Uh, you got the, uh, the near diamond light coating on here, which is kind of take it or leave it. It is pretty slick. However, it does wear pretty well in my experience. You have the improved marksman barrel. Uh, and really that's you know pretty much it as far as the pull aheads on this gun uh, except for the deletion of the finger grooves and obviously the different changes with the uh, Gen 5 trigger. Uh, this gun specifically had some of the fewer changes made to it uh, as it, as it kind of went on because when it first came out it had the double captive recoil spring uh, that the Glocks all ended up moving to. It had the beveled end here like you see on the Gen 5s now that real deeply beveled end. Uh, it had um, you know a lot of the different features and things like that that were kind of add-ons or bonuses with this new uh, generation that uh, this already had with it. So you're really not getting a whole lot except for the deletion of the finger grooves, the uh, you know the different spring mechanism and whatnot with the Gen 5 trigger, and of course that Marksman barrel. But you're only dealing with a very short barrel anyway. So how much difference does it make? I don't really know. It is a very accurate gun. Um, We'll get into that here in just a moment when I talk about shooting impressions, but uh, you know, as far as the barrel is concerned, I do really like the Gen 5 Glocks. I think they're very accurate guns. Uh, if I were to lay this against a uh, Gen 3, Gen 4 Glock, I think they are slightly better. Uh, just in my testing, you know, so the barrel just making it just a slight bit better. Of course, most of your aftermarket barrels are still going to be better uh, than what you're going to get in this. So, you know, take it or leave it. Uh, you do have the ambi controls, which I did neglect to mention. If you're a lefty, you have that uh, ambi slide release. Um, Moving on with the rest of the gun, the um, you know basically what Glock did is it created the Gen 17 or the uh, Gen 117, and um, it pretty much looked at it as kind of the end all be all of pistols. It was just revolutionary at the time and everything like that, and then everything was built off of that. So what you have with this is basically a truncated version of the Glock 17. It's even smaller than the Glock 19. Uh, so we just kept kind of cutting it down. So it will fit in those holsters that the Glock 17 will fit in. It'll fit in a Glock 19 holster. So everything basically in this part here is pretty much standard fare for Glock. So it's going to be interchangeable, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, some of the, the newer uh, compacts coming out are different from the full size, which kind of runs into some, some issues there in other manufacturers. But Glock stays true to that, and you can use this in basically any other 9mm Glock uh, double stack holster. So that's kind of neat to see. Uh, again, it is truncated down here. You're going to get these flat magazines uh, with the flat base. I added this uh, to mine. We'll talk about here, that here in just a moment. But uh, if you can just kind of imagine it without it there, uh, that's what you're going to get in the box. Um, now, as far as shooting it uh, with the truncated grip, it's not really difficult to shoot. Uh, but the reason that I added these extensions, uh, not only do you get two extra rounds, which is kind of cool, uh, but I needed a little bit more to grab onto just, just as I, I was drawing it out of concealment. So a lot of people don't think about that. They think about, you know, I want it to be con conceal as, as easily as possible. And, you know, chopping down this grip here is really going to, that's what's going to print and that's going to help me conceal it. That's a cool idea and that is true. Uh, but, you know, I found that these, you know, real stubby grips and things like that really take some time to get a grip on and pull out, especially from deep concealment. So uh, for me, I'd rather have just a little bit more to grab onto and a little bit more to get it out of the holster with uh, and get that nice solid grip, that master grip, so I can go ahead and start shooting if I need to. That's a little bit more important to me uh, than just a complete and total, um, you know, no printing and uh, deep concealment sort of approach there. So uh, that's basically what I did. That's why I did that with the... Uh, the magazine extension there. Um, otherwise, you're pretty much getting everything else you get in the uh, the Gen 5 Glock. Really not a whole lot more to talk about. You do not have an accessory rail, but as you guys may know, they do have several lights and things that, that plug on right here to the end of the uh, trigger guard. So that's not really a detrimental thing. Um, I don't really prefer carrying this with a light, so this is my preferred carry method with this light. I do carry a standalone on me at all times anyway. Um, 
that's pretty much it. Now, we're going to get into some cliff notes of the gun, um, some shooting impressions, things like that. So, uh, the Glock 26 has kind of an uncanny, uh, it's kind of like the Glock 30. It's got kind of an uncanny reputation for being a very reliable and very accurate pistol, especially for its size. Sometimes people are um, used to, I should say, I don't know if it's still the trend, but used to in GSSF, some people would post faster times or better times uh, with the Glock 26 and they would like a Glock 19, a Glock 34, a Glock 17, which would be really counterintuitive, right? Um, so a couple things you have going on. You do have a shorter slide here, um, obviously for concealment that's cool. Uh, for precise shooting that's not so cool because you're kind of losing that sight radius. Uh, but what it does I've noticed is kind of twofold. So first off with a shorter sight radius you can pick up that front sight faster. It's easier to get in this in these uh, rear dovetails and it's, it's a little bit faster to acquire that sight picture. Uh, the second thing is it's easier to focus on this front sight because it's closer to your face. Uh, so even though it is shorter, you are losing some of that precision uh, to a degree. You kind of gain it on the back end, as weird as that may seem. So I think that's kind of part of it. The other thing is the way this grip is made. So as you'll notice, this has a very, very exaggerated uh, hump back here as far as the Glock hump goes. It goes comes out you know, almost immediately right away, and uh, at least from my hands, the way that fits in my hand, it basically is like catching a baseball. It just kind of fits right in that little uh, void there in the palm of my hand. And it's really easy to lock into place and really kind of drive this pistol onto target. So um, those are basically the two things I would attribute to being able to shoot this gun fast and accurate. And that's kind of been the reputation of this gun. Like I say, it's kind of an unsung hero. A lot of people carry it. A lot of people really post good times shooting this gun. All right, guys, so let's put this on the scale next and see what we're looking at here. It is lighter than your Glock 19. It is lighter than your Glock 17. Obviously, it's got a shorter barrel, and it is a short, smaller footprint, as you would expect. Uh, but let's see exactly what we're, we're looking at here. Let me get it off of grams because that wouldn't make much sense to most of us. Okay, let's get it zeroed out here. All right, so Glock 26 unloaded. One pound, 7.2 ounces, and that is with this uh, this aluminum base plate here. Uh, I'm going to pop it out to give you a weight without the magazine in it at all. And we're looking at one pound, 3.9, one pound, four ounces is what we're looking at with uh, no magazine in it at all. So uh, just to kind of put it in perspective, it is a pretty light gun. Uh, it's just convenient to carry. It, it does kind of carry a little bit like a stapler. I have said that before, and I do like kind of the Glock 43X and the Glock 48. Um, you know, because of that, it does carry, you know, closer to you. It's thinner in those models. Uh, this is kind of a big, bulky, chunky model, even though it's kind of truncated in its, in its uh, you know, different uh, proportions. It is kind of a, still a little bit of a wide model. Now, you know, not wide compared to a lot of other things out there, uh, but it is kind of wide for its footprint. So it does kind of carry a little bit awkward. You kind of, you know, look around for your, your uh, different holsters and things like that. They're really going to uh, carry it nicely. Um, what I tend to just revert back to is always is this uh, Vanguard from uh, Raven Concealment. That's what I like to do. It's nice minimalist holster. You know, obviously not adding much to the package, and it's got that nice little uh, wing there that kind of pulls it in next to your body. Um, very nice setup, especially if you're not going to use a light, which I don't use one on this. Uh, so that's what I kind of tend to go to. I also have an out outside the waistband holster, which is really kind of cool. I usually don't carry outside the waistband. I just think it compromises too much, uh, especially for concealed situations. But with a gun this small, if you're wearing a coat or something and you get a nice high ride, um, outside the waistband holster that's really going to ride this nice and high up in there. Uh, it's like you're not even wearing a gun with this thing on if it's in an outside the waistband holster. So uh, another cool little thing, okay? Um, other than that, gee, shoots really well. It's really accurate. Uh, it's priced fairly. It's you know priced in accordance with all the other Glocks, of course, which is kind of that mid-range level. Um, boy, it's reliable. I mean, uh, you know, holds... Plenty of ammunition. It's it's really a really stellar gun, especially if you're looking for something in the compact uh, market. And you like Glocks, okay? If you don't like Glocks, you don't like the trigger, you don't like the way they point, you're probably not going to like this. But, you know, not everybody's going to like everything, and I'm cool with that. Um, so we'll make one last little comparison here. Now, I talked a little bit in my 43X, my 48 videos about the Glock 26, um, specifically about the way the trigger is made. So, again, uh, this gun is basically just like you're going to get with um, you know any other 9mm um, standard size Glock and uh, the internals are basically the same in there 
And uh, the cool thing is that you have all of the, uh, you know, the robust, the overbuilt stuff that, that is in all the other Glocks there, even though this is a smaller gun. Uh, so to me, like the 48, the 43, um, the 48, uh, yeah, I already mentioned that, 43X, all of those kind of slimline guns, if you will, um, the things inside there, the, the trigger mechanism, the, uh, you know, the trigger bar, all that kind of stuff is smaller. It's just kind of shrunk down. Um, so... You know, I've not seen or heard of, heard of them breaking. I really don't think they will. But overall, if you're just going to put down a ton of rounds, um, you know, Glock 26 or something of the like would probably be a little bit better to do that with. And in addition, you get this kind of, uh, you know, very standard um, Glock style trigger um, that's going to be, in, you know, pretty much the same in all your other guns. So if you carry like a uh, Glock 17 on duty, this is going to replicate identically that trigger. It's literally the same parts in there. Right, so the, the, the trigger feel is exactly the same. Um, and I'll just walk you through it. You pretty much have uh, you know, some pretty loose take up, not a lot. You start building and stacking just a little bit as you get close to the wall. On these Gen 5s, the wall is kind of subtle. It's, it's not really like, a, you know, like the wall of China like it used to be. Uh, but you kind of hit that wall and you're gonna continue pulling through. And a uh, good ways after you go through that wall, it's gonna finally break. And your reset's nice, short, and crisp, and tactile, and then you're right back into the wall again, and you can just kind of run them that way. Uh, but again, this, this feels a lot more like the other standard size Glocks because it essentially is the same trigger mechanism than does the Glock 43, uh, 43X, or the 48, at least in my hands. It, I can shoot those guns pretty much just the same as this, but I've really got to work harder at doing it. I've got to stage very hard on that wall, I've got to break through that wall, uh, you know, fairly aggressively. Uh, just different things, different nuances to it. Um, but overall, I think this is an easier gun to shoot. It's got a better trigger, uh, and it does kind of fill my hand a little bit better than uh, the Glock uh, Slimline series does. So I know those questions are coming. Hopefully that cleared it up for you a little bit. Um, other than that, I really can't think of anything else to add about this gun. It's a stellar gun. It's a stellar deal, uh, especially if you want a gun, one gun that could do it all. This could could theoretically do it all. You wouldn't really be, you know, hampered too much by putting this into like an actual competition. Uh, it'd be, you know, pretty much up there with your Glock 19 almost uh, or your Glock 17s and things like that. Uh, it would be a great concealed carry option. It is just a great do-all gun. So if you're in the market, if you're looking, even if you're looking at those smaller guns like the 43X or the 48 or the LCPs or whatever else you might be looking at that's a smaller gun, see if you can do with the Glock 26 first would be my opinion. All right, guys. As always, thank you for tuning in, and I will keep these coming at you. Until next time, continue to work, continue to develop, continue to build your craft. And I will catch you later. Jay Helmson, guys.